we suck again! Yeah, now, now I know why Rob Schneider won an Oscar for that role. It's too accurate. And the Oscar goes to... We suck again! As a Broncos fan, I had been riding a five-week, six-week high, if you count the bye, five straight wins for my team, and a win against the Texans would have increased their playoff chances by 35%. This was the biggest game I have watched my team play in December since 2016, and I only got three days into December before I watched my Broncos playoff chances plummet. Texans slam the door shut. Russ throws a game-ending pick in the rust zone of all places, a dimension of red zone TDs, a dimension of bad fumbles, a dimension of unfair penalties. You're moving into a land of bullshit and promise. Yes, you just crossed over into the rust zone. Oh shit, it works. It works both ways. It's it still is the rust zone. American novelist Dr. Seuss wrote, "Don't cry because it's over." Smile because it happened. Which makes me believe Dr. Seuss never watched a single fucking football game in his stupid life. He certainly never put money on a game. Smile because it happened. How about I shove some green eggs and ham right up your ass for three and a half hours and then watch you fail at the one thing you're great at. That game ending pick was like Dr. Seuss getting to the final page of his book and then suddenly not being able to think of a single fucking rhyme. It rhymes with two. And I hope they ban more of your books, doctor. All right. I said all of the new, 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 new worst games were over. Well, guess what? I lied. I'm a liar. I'm a filthy liar. Never trust me. New, 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 Today's episode is sponsored by manscaped.com slash good sports. And it's December, which means it's time to deck your balls. Deck your balls. That didn't go as planned. You're soon to be smooth balls, holiday balls. Now ask for, get someone, or gift yourself Manscaped's Performance Package 5.0 Ultra. You get the new two-headed lawnmower. The Weed Whacker 2.0 Ear and Nose Hair Trimmer, plus the Crop Soother and Preserver, all tightly wrapped in a nice, neat package. It really is the perfect gift to give or receive. And if you're looking for a stocking stuffer, I suggest the Manscaped Boxers. Boxer briefs. Seriously, I've given these out to so many friends as gifts because they're my favorite boxer briefs. But the star of the package is the Lawnmower 5.0. Go ahead, put it atop your tree if you want. It's that much of a star. It now has two heads with dual skin safe blades, an upgraded trimmer blade, and interchangeable foil blades, which allow you to get utterly bare down there. You can easily swap out the trimmer blade for the foil blade and do it all in the shower since it's waterproof. It's really like having two trimmers in one. It's got a rechargeable lithium ion battery, a bigger LED light, which you will appreciate down in your dirty nooks and crannies. So use my link below, manscaped.com slash good sports for 20% off plus free international shipping only with my link though. And get your orders in now so everything arrives in time for the holidays. Nope, nope, it's it. I'm boycotting the NFL. They've gone too woke, too PC, saying this about our running backs. Remember, Denver's got those plus size running backs. Javante Williams listed at 220, I think he's a little bit bigger. Plus size, just say it. We have fat running backs. Also, if we're gonna body shame someone, let it be Kirk Hainish for not understanding how eye black works. No, Kurt, it's not called that so you can make it look like you have two shiners or like you're trying to mate with a raccoon. Now last week, during a win, Russell Wilson was out there bragging about his penis size. Well, Texans receiver Brevin Jordan was doing the same after this catch and run to set up the Texans' first score. Let's just say I relate to Brevin more than Russ. 
know what I mean? Texans crank a field goal there. CJ Stroud was just tearing up the Broncos in the first half of this game, including dropping massive bombs of 52 and 59 yards to Nico Collins, who, like his father, was catching everything in the air tonight. Phil Collins. Yeah, I know it was a morning game. Just let me have this one. Can I have one? Can I have one? Collins also had a 39 yarder in the mix somewhere, uh, finishing with a buck 91 in a TD. His first 50 yarder though set up the first Texans touchdown, but only because Alex Singleton got flagged for having the audacity to not like the fact that CJ Stroud went full on Stroud boy and January 6th his head with a headbutt. Yeah, Singleton did put his hands on Stroud after the whistle blew on that play. He shouldn't have done that, and he's got to be smarter. I just want to point out, though, that it was Stroud who initiated the helmet-to-helmet -helmet contact, a play neither guy should be penalized for. This was a weak-ass penalty, and if Kareem Jackson did this, he would be learning Chinese, buddy. But let's be real here. Why was 69 not flagged? Either way, that penalty saved the Texans' arses. Unfortunately, though, this is the touchdown uh, that ended up fracturing Fracturing Tank Dell's leg. Really crappy news for a guy who is having a great season. I don't know much, but if you have a nickname like Tank, I am confident he will come back stronger than ever, okay? My nickname was Lil Lice, which, which is why I never recovered from a single injury and why I also had special shampoo as a child. A series uh, later, the dirty Denver D holds and the Texans just settle for a field goal. Four punts and a field goal for the Broncos in the first half. Corlin Sutton inexplicably dropped this deep pass on the first series. The Texans blocked a punt that set up their first field goal. There were just some silly blunders early by the Broncos, but the one that I keep coming back to is this. Russell Wilson not seeing Jared Judy wide open on fourth and one. Rarely do you bitch about converting a fourth down, but Russ not recognizing Judy wide open here is alarming, considering how much time Russ had to throw the football. If we're talking about Russ's ride, Jerry's always in his blind spot. That's a TD. When Russ did see an open Judy, it set up a touchdown later. Now the worst stat for the Broncos was not Russ's three interceptions in the second half. Uh, that, that was bad, but it was the fact that they were 0-11 on third down, not getting a single third down conversion with one of the highest paid quarterbacks and an offensive minded head coach also highest paid in the league is like losing the knife fight when you were the guy who brought the fucking gun. <laughs> in other news that makes my brain want to just implode, Denver converted all three of their fourth downs. And on cue, just when I was ready to give up on the Broncos, Russ pulls me back in by dropping a dime to Cortland Sutton who makes a catch a thousand times more difficult than the one he dropped. That was his first touchdown that came outside of the Russ zone, by the way. Six point game. I started to believe Denver is gonna win again. I was high on hopium heading into this game. So high that I smoked that hopium. I injected that hopium. I baked that shit into a delicious batch of brownies and I ate the whole fucking pan. After that TD, I balled up the hopium and inserted it rectally. I was a proud hopium junkie because the Broncos had won five in a row. And this is how they were winning every single one of those games. But my one fear, what would happen to this Broncos team if the defense didn't get three or four turnovers like it had been doing in all of those wins? The answer, lose in soul crushing fashion. Oh, look, there's my beautiful little soul. And here come the Broncos. They'll smash it back down to hell where I belong. But of all of their ridiculous turnover stats, the one I knew that would not sustain was the fumble recovery stat. That dirty Denver D had two plus fumble recoveries in four straight games, which is insane. After that Sutton TD, Denver's D forced one of two fumbles in this game. The first bounced right back to Houston, and this was nearly recovered by Jonathan Cooper after the strip sack, but because of that mother piece of shit, stupid guy. Stupid ass, stupid little fucking stupid football. It bounced back to Houston. Now I mentioned that because had Denver recovered that ball, Houston does not punt and this backbreaking pick and touchdown do not ensue. The man who really did the Broncos in in this game was the Texans top five rookie pick. 
And I'm actually not talking about C.J. Stroud, even though he was excellent at times in this game. It was Will Anderson, the third overall pick, who was absolutely wreaking havoc in the Denver backfield and blowing up Denver's game plan for most of the game. Anderson has gotten pressure all season, yes, but today a couple of them turned into sacks as well for the first year player from Bama. He tipped that punt that gave the Texans great field position in the first quarter, and he also got his hand on a ball that turned into Russell Wilson's first interception since week six when the Broncos win streak began. If we're talking about the Texans, I try and avoid saying the phrase, just the tip for obvious reasons, but Anderson's tips impregnated us all with a loss. And cause it's Texas, we gotta carry that L to term. That interception turned into the Texans' final touchdown of the game. Nico Collins gets Jaquan McMillan more twisted than that evil clown who used to live in Bill O'Brien's chin. <laughs> remember me? <laughs> yeah, Jack, Jack off Easter Bunny. And Nico scores. Denver. No pressure in the first half. Denver, all the pressure in the second half. Denver is perfectly balanced at being wildly imbalanced. They ended up with five sacks, all of them in the second half. And it's a big reason that the Broncos managed to keep Stroud under 300 yards after he put up 153 on his first six completions of the game. Denver was actually really good at keeping the penalties to a minimum in this game, but there was another one that really bothered me and may have cost Denver the game. A penalty not called. Here's an underthrown ball. That's a slam dunk defensive pass interference with Derek Stingley getting to Marvin Mims too early on this throw 99.9% .9 of the time. The refs swallowed their whistles and instead of Denver getting the ball inside the 10 yard line, they had to punt for the 59th time in the second quarter. The only way to end the inconsistencies of bad officiating is by purchasing my coffee the fuck the refs blend at benchwarmerbrew.com. All money is laundered into buying judges, federal judges who have promised to put bad officials in jail where they belong. So I don't wanna blame the refs for everything because the Texans lost out on what probably should have been a defense. <laughs> Desmond King, who had just an insane game. He led the team with 10 tackles from the corner position. But the refs mysteriously ruled that P. Ryan's forward progress was stopped and the Broncos were able to dodge a huge bullet in the third quarter. Just not the bullet that hit them in the dick harder than Delarian Turner Yell had his hand on Texan punter Cameron Johnston's Johnson. That play had no effect on the game but you needed to see this running into the punter. I could be mad about this game, but I'll never not smile watching this play. In the fourth quarter, PJ Locke and Alex Singleton took over on defense with some nasty run stops and insane sacks, and Russ responded by throwing a horrible pick. Derek Stingley plays it perfectly, comes in and rips the ball away from Cortland Sutton like Russ rips Yara away from future. Stingley had two picks in this game. He's got four in the last three. Nice to see him hit his stride after only playing in five games as a rookie last year. Houston, they got a lot of young guys balling right now. That pick though is why the Broncos were in desperation mode in the final series. Russ, to his credit, finds Sutton deep on their final drive. This time he hits over the middle. They convert two fourth and shorts to give themselves a chance with 23 seconds left. That's right, they had a chance and just a, a very manageable eight yards to glory. I want me some glory hole. Me too, Jerry. Except this is the kind of glory hole you stick your Jimmy Johnson in and you come out with a mangled set of berries and a nub for a Switzer. Four downs, eight yards to go. Last week, I watched this touchdown pass happen. The week before, I watched this TD happen. Before that, this TD. For whatever reason, with another play in the bank, Russ deposits this pick. And here I am again, ready to be hurt again next week. Because 19% playoff chances? Actually, actually, that ain't too bad, guys. That ain't too bad, considering where we were back in October. Thanks for watching the new worst game ever. Come back tomorrow when we recap all of NFL week 13.